Some insects are so small that we cannot get a pin through the body of the thorax. So we use small triangular pieces of paper that are bent at the tip and we glue the specimen on this little piece of triangular paper. This is called pointing. And some insects are even so small that we even use minute pins. And I'm going to show you both ways how to do minute pinning and also using a point. These are some examples of specimens that you'd want to put on points. We got ants, uh, small bees, uh, sawflies, any insect that is less than seven millimeters uh, in length and with our thorax is about two to three millimeters in width. Those are specimens that you'd want to point. Now in order to make points uh, you can have, it's like a hole puncher uh, you get these from BioQuip, they're kind of expensive. Um, but you just use cardstock paper and you cut little triangular pieces of paper, of cardstock, and those are what you're going to use for your points. To make a point, you use uh, an insect pin, uh, preferably a two or a number three. It doesn't really matter the, uh, how large the pin is. Um, because you're pinning it through the paper, you're not pinning the specimen. So preferably a large or thick pin uh, is great for points. I take the pin and instead of pinning the insect, I'm putting the pin through the point. And that's through the fat end of the triangle, leaving at least 10 millimeters at the top. Now you have this piece of paper on the pin, leaving at least 10 millimeters from the uh, point to the tip of the pin and then with your finger you just carefully bend the very tip of this point. When you bend that tip then it makes a little flat end at the end, end of that point. At the end of that point you're going to put glue on that point and then use it to, uh, to stick onto your specimen. With your specimens, you want to make sure all your specimens are kind of leaning on their left side so their right side is exposed, making it easier for you to stick the point on the specimen. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this point. And the glue you can use is Elmer's glue. So just regular Elmer's glue is fine. You don't want to use super glue because it dries too quickly. Elmer's glue is has a kind of a thick consistency and you're able to stick your specimen on there much easier. So then I take this point with the glue on it and I stick it right on the right side of the thorax of this specimen. If the specimen is uh, not sitting on the point just right you can carefully manipulate the specimen on the point and then give it a gentle blow and that will dry the specimen on the point much quicker. So there you have a specimen on a point. So I'm going to take glue. Here's another specimen I'm going to point. I'm going to take glue, stick it right at the tip of that point. With uh, larger specimens you may need a little bit more glue. And I take this point, so the specimen is on its left side with the right side sticking up. I stick the glue right on the right side of the thorax of that specimen and now the specimen is on that point. And then I can manipulate it just so it stays on the point a little bit better and then give it a gentle blow. And now that specimen is dried on that point. Now with pointing ants you have to be careful uh, because their thorax is bent inward, so the ant will sometimes be positioned a little slanted. But that's okay. Uh, you just want to make sure you get it on the right side of the thorax. Now the thing with ants, it doesn't matter what size the ant is, whether it's uh, four, uh, three millimeters or ten millimeters, all ants need to, be go need to be put on points. You never pin an ant. It's also good if you get a bunch of ants to have some of them in alcohol. So with the ant I'm going to put a little bit of glue 
on the tip of that point and I can hold my specimen with my forceps and make sure to point the ant right on the right side of the thorax. If the ant is too heavy, so if it's a big ant, it may fall off the point. You can lean over and just give it a gentle blow while it is on the paper and then it should stick to the point as you lift it up. And now you have an ant pointed. So now I'm going to show you how to do minute pins. With minute pins, you can buy a box of minute pins. They're 0.015, or 0 0.15 is the number. Um, they're called minute pins. You can get them from BioQuip. You also want to get uh, corks or some kind of foam. And you cut those into very small pieces. So here are some little styrofoam blocks that are cut into little tiny pieces in this vial and these are my minute pins. They're very tiny pins. Now minute pins um, are pretty small. You don't want to drop these in your lap because you'll never find them and you don't want to have p these little minute pins in your lap and then you go and sit in your car and all of a sudden you get one of these in your thigh uh, and it'll make you jump. So you have one of these little minute pins. I use forceps to take them out of the vial and I just set them on my pinning block. And then I get a small cork, rubber, rubber cork here. You can use wood cork, any kind of cork is fine. I'm going to set that right there on my pinning block. And just like making a point, you take the pin and you take the pin, you pin it, you, you're actually pinning the cork on your pinning block. And so the distance, again, is just like, a minute, uh, just like a point or a pin specimen. You want to have at least 10 millimeters from the block to the tip of the I pin. I take my minute pin with my forceps and then the little styrofoam block, and I'm going to take the pin and push it through that styrofoam block with the forceps. They're so small, you don't want to use your fingers because it'll go right through your fingertip. And you push it through all the way to the other side and you can take the end of your forceps to push it through to the other side. So then you have a minute pin on a little block. Now with, the, with this B here I wouldn't want to use a point because I might glue uh, the wings together. Uh, normally you do this with a pertida or something much smaller than this, but I uh, want to have a specimen at least large enough to where you can see it on film. So this Lassioglossum B, typically you'd put on a point, it's okay, but I'm going to show you how to use a minute pin on this specimen. You can use your forceps to hold the specimen, and then you take the pin, the minute pin, and you're going to pin it right through the thorax. And then you can use your finger just to manipulate the specimen so it's straight on that point. And there you have a specimen on a minute pin. And this works really good with mosquitoes also because they're very, they're very uh, delicate insects and if you use a point you might glue uh, important identif identification characteristics. With pointing insects, you don't need to use points for just small insects. You can use points for larger insects too that need more support and use bigger points. A good example would be phasmids, walking sticks. So with walking sticks, they have these elongate bodies and it's really hard. You can't actually pin them because their bodies elongate and very narrow. And so you have a lot of that body that's going to sink in one end or the other. So you could take a point you take two points actually and crisscross them so that the specimen is supported by the two pieces of the triangle.